everybody tonight. How are you doing? Did you have a great day? Did you have an okay day? How was your day? I had a very interesting day. Um, I wanted to share with you guys, and I don't know if you know this or not, but um, I do not have with me. Hey, Paula! So glad you guys are on. I um, wanted to share that uh, in the past couple years, it's been about two years ago, my mom and my dad, well, actually, my dad first has passed away. And my mom passed away April 28th, so we buried her May 1st. Um, we had a little bit of a debacle with that, and we got it all wrapped up today. And I was kind of sad for just a minute, thinking, wow, I'm, I'm not going to be able to see her. And that's true. I won't be able to see her here on earth anymore. But I will be able to see my mom and dad in heaven. So I thought I might want to share with you how do I know for sure that my mom and dad are in heaven? Well, that's a great question. And I can share, answer that by saying the way that they live their lives, um, when when they studied the Bible or when they did something. Now, did they ever do anything wrong? Sure. Sure they did because they're human and they're going to make mistakes. Do I like to think that my parents did anything wrong? Nope. In my eyes, they were perfect, right? So, I know that they were, first of all, because they told us. Um, I have a brother and a sister, so they told their children, yes, they were Christians, they had Jesus in their heart, and they would get to go to heaven, and that's where they're going to go for eternity. So, I was pretty excited to start thinking about when I get to see mom again, how, what is, what is it going to be like? Uh, am I going to be able to run up to her? What, what exactly is heaven? So I found this story tonight, and it's called A Dream of Heaven. And I wanted to share with you what exactly, what is heaven? And is it real? Is there a place there? So this comes out of Revelation chapters 1, 5, 21, and 22. And Revelation is uh, full of prophecy and if you like sci-fi movies, then you would really love to read Revelation because there's a lot of imagery that's representative of things. So it'll talk about um, a multi-headed something or other, and it'll be indic indicative of maybe a country or uh, just different things, just different things. Revelation is actually a Bible study that we're going through on Tuesday nights with Megan on the um, boldmovement.com <clears throat> if you're interested please shoot her an email, info, info at theboldmovement.com, and she'll be happy to send you the Zoom invite. You haven't missed much. We haven't gone very far with it, so and it's easy to recap. But I started thinking, what exactly is heaven? So this is titled A Dream of Heaven. So we're talking about John, and of course, one of Jesus' friends and followers is, uh, he's in prison again. Just, you know, just in prison so this is John was one of Jesus helpers he was old now and he was living on an island so let's think about an island what constitutes an island an island is a piece of land that is surrounded by water so he's old living on an island and it might sound really nice except it was a prison so the leaders Put him there to stop him from talking about Jesus. Now, can you imagine? He was put into prison so he would quit talking about Jesus. But I'm sure you don't think a little thing like being in a cell or in a prison or on an island in the middle of an ocean could stop God's plan, do you? Of course not. So God's really pretty cool because when he wants you, he will find you anywhere. Whether you are in a prison, in a cell, on an island, in the middle of an ocean, and you're old. Okay, he's still going to find you, right? So that's where John was. One morning, Jesus appeared right there in John's cell. Okay, it's not like, hey, I'm looking out the window, I think I might see something. No, he was right there with him. Jesus' eyes were bright, shining like the sun. I am going to show you a secret, John, Jesus said, about when I come back write down what you see so God's children can read it and wait with happy excitement. 
And I like that sentence because it doesn't say, write it down so God's children can read it and mope and mourn and be like, oh, my life is awful. Oh. Okay, he's saying, write it down so they can read it and wait with happy excitement. So what he's saying is we should be looking forward to having the opportunity to meet Jesus in heaven and to share eternity with him. Not like, oh, I don't, it'd be more fun to go out and rob a bank than it would be to sit here and study my Bible. Is that crazy talk? Yes, that's not right. We need to learn more about God. So, then Jesus gave John a beautiful dream. Except, <laughs> I'm telling you, God's, God's doing some pretty magical stuff. Well, pretty amazing stuff. How's that? He gave John a beautiful dream. Except, now there, when I say except, that means hold up. It's a dream, but guess what? He was wide awake. Oh, yeah. He was wide awake, and what he saw was real, and one day, it would all come true. Okay. Let's take a minute and digest this. We're talking about John, and we're talking about how he's in prison, of course. Um, Jesus helpers. Seems like they always found their way into prison, doesn't it? But it wasn't because they were doing something wrong, necessarily. It was because other people were trying to get them to zip it, to quit talking about Jesus. And they're like, no, we're going to keep talking. Like, okay, you're going to prison. Okay. But I love the story where we talk about when the two were in prison and they were shackled and the shackles fell and the earthquake came and the prison doors opened and they didn't run away. They witnessed to the man who was the prison, he was the uh, prison guard. Why do we always think that everything is bad is happening? It could very well be happening because God's trying to put you where he needs you to fulfill what he needs you to do. So let's recap. John, poor old John, he's an old man now. He's living on an island in a prison in a cell because he wouldn't quit talking about Jesus. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Well, then one morning Jesus appeared right there in his cell and Jesus' eyes were bright, shining like the sun. And he's talking to John. And John's like, oh, okay, this is a crazy dream. He's not dreaming. This is happening, people. Oh, my goodness. So, he said, here's what's going to happen. One day this is all going to come true. Now, this is a picture of where John's little prison cell was on an island in the middle of the ocean. Poor old guy. He's just not having a really uh, great day until Jesus comes along. So, here was what he saw. He saw a throne. Do you know what a throne is? A throne is like where a king sits. So he has saw a throne, and on the throne is a king. And the king, who do you think the king is? The king is Jesus. All around the throne, people are bowing down. They're giving him their treasures. There are loud cheers and clapping, clapping and bright laughter, like a thousand waterfalls. And everyone bursts out singing a new song. So, this is our king, the lamb who died, so we don't have to, our rescuer, all honor and glory, forever and ever, and every creature, everywhere, in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and in the sea, joins in, and then, from all around, a wide, immense, beautiful sea. And I see Satan, God's horrible enemy, thrown down, defeated. Once again, God has won this battle. So this is a little picture of what it looks like. It's kind of sideways in the book, so I'm turning it for you. It gets even better, guys. I see a sparkling city, shimmering in the sky, glittering, glowing, coming down from heaven and from the sky. Heaven is coming down to earth. God's city is beautiful. Walls of topaz, jasper, sapphire, wide streets paved with gold, gleaming pearl gates that are never locked shut. Where is the sun? Where is the moon? They aren't needed anymore. God is all the light people need. No more darkness, no more night. And the king says, look, God and his children are together again. 
No more running away or hiding. No more crying or being lonely or afraid. No more being sick or dying. Because all those things are gone. Yes, they're gone forever. Everything sad has come untrue. And see, I have wiped away every tear from every eye. And then a deep, beautiful voice that sounded like thunder in the sky says, look, I am making everything new. This is a picture. It was hard to squeeze all John saw into words and fit it onto a page and cram it into a book. All the words on all the pages of all the books and all the world would never be enough. I am the beginning, Jesus said, and the ending. Have you ever heard anybody say the Alpha and the Omega? It's the beginning and the end. One day, John knew heaven would come down and mend God's broken world and make it our true, perfect home once again. And he knew in some mysterious way that would be hard to explain, that everything was going to be more wonderful for once having been so sad. And he knew that the ending of the story was going to be so great, so, so great, it would make all the sadness and tears and everything seem like just a shadow that is chased away by the morning sun. I'm on my way, said Jesus. I'll be there soon. John came to the end of, the, of his book, but he didn't write the end because, of course, that's how stories finish. But you see, this one's not over yet. So instead, he wrote, Come quickly, Jesus, which perhaps is really just another way of saying to be continued. Here's a picture of him writing. And here's to be continued. What do you think about that? I don't really know how I control my tears from streaming down my face because the thoughts of being able to see my mom and dad again in heaven makes me overjoyed. It makes me sad. I miss them now but it makes me happy that I can look forward to something. How can I be sure I'm going to heaven? Because I have Jesus in my heart. Do I make mistakes? Do I do wrong things? Do I say something crazy? Do I act something wrong sometimes? Of course I do, I'm human. But the really cool fun fact about that is God already knows that. He already knew I was gonna make those mistakes and has already planned to forgive me. I ask Jesus to forgive me daily because I sin daily and I ask him to help me to learn from that mistake and to correct my behavior so it can be glorifying to him. I want to live the life that God can be seen through my actions, through my emotions, through the way I speak, the way I react to things. I want to live a godly life. If you aren't sure that you have Jesus in your heart, it's simple. Dear Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me for my sins. I'm asking you to come into my life. I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my heart. I want to live my life for you. How easy is that there? Please forgive me and let me now serve you. If you might have said that prayer today, please reach out to us. Info, I-N-F-O, at theboldmovement.com. Allow Jesus the story of what he went through in his life to be an example of what we're probably going to encounter. But how do we react to that? And how do we stay strong? And how do we live a godly life? If you have any questions or you have any concerns, whether your soul is going to heaven, we need to fix that. And we need to fix that now. I don't want you to leave here tonight and turn this off without knowing 100% certainty that Jesus and, and his son Jesus and God our Father is the Lord and Savior of your life you have him in your heart and that you're wanting to serve and live for him. Forgiveness is easy. Sometimes it seems too easy to be true. 
It's a simple process. I didn't say it was going to be easier for you. I just said it's an easy process. Thank you for sharing just a little bit of your evening tonight with me. I really appreciate the support, the comments, and the feedback. But most of all, I appreciate you guys. You have so many other things that you could be doing, and you chose to listen in. I want you to take this story and share it with someone and let them know what our future looks like. How can we be sure? Be kind. Be faithful. Be generous. Be bold. Be a faithful follower of Christ and learn to be obedient to Him. Be bold with how you live your life and don't be afraid to tell others about Jesus Christ and how He died on the cross for us. So we have the opportunity to live forever with Him in heaven if we choose to. God gives us a choice. What's your choice to make? Let us know what you decided. Follow us on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, or I'm forgetting one. Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Or you can email us at info, info, at theboldmovement.com. I want you to know that I am praying for you. I'm very concerned with your soul. If you have questions, reach out to us. But be bold, be thankful, and please make sure you know where you're going. Make sure you know where eternity is going to be because it's really on time. I want to talk to you guys tomorrow night at 730, and we will start diving in some really cool new stuff. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow night. Mwah! Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Be bold. Bye, guys.